Light Sound is this is this device here. It's an uh, accessibility tool. Um, it is uh, was designed for blind and visually impaired, but we realize that um, sighted people also um, can use this and enjoy it. Um, it I'm going to go through some technical details for those that don't understand or don't care. It doesn't matter. You don't need to understand. Um, but it uses Arduino hardware. Um, it's got a light sensor on the back here and basically takes the light and converts it to sound. So um, just outputting it based on light intensity, very simple concept. Um, you can output it through headphones, so you can have kind of an individual experience, or we have, you can connect to a speaker and kind of project to a group, have like a sound listening, kind of, I was inspired by the astrophotography thing, like you can have like a sound section kind of like that if you wanted. Um, it runs either on a nine volt battery or the new ones run on a rechargeable lithium ion, um, super cheap, easy to build. I'll talk about, the workshops that we teach students to build. I um, mean, every, importantly, everything's open source. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, everything's online, English, Spanish, French. We are going through Canada now. So we converted our documentation to French um, software. Everything's up on the website for folks to, to um, access. So this is what the inside looks like. These are both uh, the same devices. but So the wired one here on the left um, and then our new printed circuit board version the big difference is, uh, well, the lithium ion battery. So now it's rechargeable. Also, it takes 15 minutes to build the one on the right, a couple hours on the left. So uh, different teaching concepts. When we get to the workshops, I'll talk about that. But but basically, for those, again, that are interested, the, the circle part in the middle there or that long top one is the microcontroller board. So it's where the code exists. So the light comes in through the light sensor, goes through the microcontroller board, gets mapped to the MIDI board, which is where the sound Gets, um, so it gets mapped to an instrument. So the way we've done it, and of course you can edit this if you don't like these instruments, but bright light goes uh, to a flute sound and then it goes to a clarinet and then it goes to like a low clicking sound. I um, mean, we did it on purpose because when you're in totality, right? We heard just re recently all the cheers and the cries. And so you don't want to be overwhelmed with sound, right? Um, and okay, so I have a clip. I hope it works. Angela, can you press play? Angela? Okay, so this is bright light. This is kind of a demo of what might happen in an eclipse. <laughs> Yay, eclipses! All right, so we, we started this project in 2017, um, and so we had three prototypes in the U.S. So I was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, first eclipse, totally awesome. It was clear. Um, and then we had two in Kentucky where we collected the data. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But, but then it was 2019, 2020, so the South American eclipses were a really big deal. So we built about 100. Um, I'll say I didn't put it in, but we have a, a map of our eclipse sites now on our website, which you can go to. Um, but we have something similar to what's up there. But these are just a few photos that we got back and, and um, so different types of experiences. So like I said, you could put it on your headphones and you can you can have an individual listening. They were sent out in Eclipse kits with part of uh, the groups down there. You know, this one on the right is another way. So on the table there is the, is the light sound and it connects to a speaker. And so you can have these kind of like listening events within a bigger event. Um, so, what are we doing now? We are aiming to build 500 or more of these devices. We've already built over 200. Many of you in the room already have some. Um, please scan and request the device if you want. So we are donating pre-built devices. So you don't have to build these. You don't have to understand them. You just turn them on and they work. Um, and so we're happy to do that. So please, please uh, reach out if you're having an event. I'll pause for a second, but I will have this QR code at the at the end as well. Um, but we're also running workshops because we realized, you know, our small group, like we have to build these, how the heck are we going to do it? So, um, and in doing so, we realized this is a great opportunity to teach people to solder. So we reach out to communities and, you know, student organizations and we say, hey, do you want to, do you want to learn to solder? You want to build these devices? And then we don't, to, donate them to communities. Uh, so the first one we did was back in 2020. Then we teamed up with Dan Schneiderman, wherever you are, there you are in Rochester, and we built a bunch of these devices. Um, we've been all over. So in April, we were at the University of Arizona with the Time Step program. It was a great organization. 
Uh, we were in UT Austin in June running a workshop. Some people here were there <laughs> in the front row. Um, and then we did one at Harvard. This is um, the printed circuit board. So this is the first one we did of these. And this is the one I said, you know, over two days, we built 200 of these. So it was really awesome. And then just a few days ago, uh, UT San Antonio, thanks for hosting us. Um, I'll, I'll point out to Tiffany here. She built this device. So Tiffany had had never had never soldered before. And um, by the end of the day, she built three of them. And now she's going to be running workshops for us. So really, really exciting. And that's that's how this project can be sustainable is like training people and then having people take over. OK, so just in the last couple of minutes, I'll just show this a few things. We don't we're not that techie. We don't have this really great website, but it has all the information you need. So down on the right is are the instructions to build operating instructions, wiring diagram. Uh, our three our cases are 3D printed, so you can print them at libraries if you want. Um, the GitHub where all the code exists. We also have software plotting tools so you can collect the data. So I think, I, I don't know if I said this, but on the side, this um, is a port that connects to a computer. So you can, that's how you recharge the battery. It's also how you would, um, you can connect to a computer and collect the data and then plot it, which I'll show on the next slide. And then of course the link to request a free, free device if you want. Um, on the GitHub site, again, if you're interested, the first one is the code that actually runs the device. And then the next two are the, the plotting and logging software. Um, this is also just um, if you're interested in collecting the data, because a lot of you have devices and you said maybe we're going to send out information on uh, more instructions. But the instructions are there, but we'll summarize it for you. But um, this is how you would do it through the Arduino IDE, collect the data, and then it plots for you. Um, and this is just an example set up from um, the 2020 Eclipse in South America. So you can set up the device on a table connect it to speakers and to a computer and you can collect the data and make a make a little plot. Uh, we, we have a Discord server. If you use Discord, I don't know, uh, Soleil is managing that for us. So you can reach out and ask questions. Um, again, our website and if you want to scan for a device and thank you. <laughs>